Hi. What I thought I'd do for a change is walk through uh, this, how the patch is made up and then let it play for a good long time because this is the kind of patch that really needs some time to develop. I've been running some experiments and having some fun with the dual looping delay from 4MS. Um, and what I've been doing recently is setting it up in a way that emulates um, the looping delays that Terry Riley used to set up. He called it uh, time-like accumulation. It's not exactly the same as, as uh, Terry Riley did, but the principle is very similar. Uh, basically what we've got is an audio feed coming in, which we're monitoring on the delay, but we're also sending that same delay across to another delay which has a longer delay time and we're monitoring that as well. In Terry Riley's case what you do is is take the second delay and feed it back into the first so you're recording sound on sound. Um, I'm not doing that here to prevent it running away with itself because you do get a lot of feedback if you do that with this setup but also because if we monitor A and B separately we get a nice spatialization effect. Um, so that's base, That's really the guts of the whole thing. That's the engine that drives it. And what I'm doing is I'm feeding it um, a very sparse generative melodic line. So I'm just going to quickly talk you through how that's happening. And the core of that is coming from the, um, the clock. We're taking the clock out from the delay, which is going to drive everything about the generative patch that I'm just going to show you. So first of all, that clock is coming out to Ornament and Crime, which is running the uh, Hemispheres firmware. So the, the first half of Ornament and Crime, this half, is set up in is a clock skipping mode. This is the clock coming in from the delay, and we're basically thinning it out to so it only comes through 10% of the time. Uh, so we've now got a very, very slow, uh, very occasional clock coming out. That clock is going to feed the ADAC complex random, which spits out a random CV on every clock beat that it receives. So you could use this, you could do the same thing using a sample and hold, uh, feeding it noise, um, but it's just more convenient for me to use this. Um, and we're then taking that voltage and feeding it into the dope for quantizer to uh, push it into scalar values. One of the nice features about the dope for quantizer is it puts out a trigger on every quantization. So we can take that trigger out and use it to fire off this envelope here. And then that controls the VCA for the melodic voice. The melodic voice is being provided by the Sputnik dual oscillator. Um, and you'll notice that I've also got some modulation going in. Uh, this is taking an again it's no, taking another random voltage from the complex random generator, and we're just using that to vary the timbre of the lead voice. The other thing that's going on is we're taking a copy of the ten percent clock, and again using the other half of the hemispheres, we're using a gate delay on that and delaying that clock by one and a half seconds and then using that to fire a second envelope and the whole system there is controlling this little setup here. What this is doing is it's providing a fade on the LFO and I'm feeding that to the uh, FM input of the dual oscillator to provide a kind of vibrato effect um, on some of the longer notes. And that's the entire generative patch. So if I just give you the dry feed on A, then as the clock... 
as the clock does its thing, that's the dry input. And so it's very occasional, very sparse. But if we turn the delay feeds up, 